Happy Monday, everybody. It is August. Oh, let it be August. August 2nd, 2021. We're getting started with the Weird Things podcast here in a little bit. Hello, everybody. Are we still doing the who the hell let it be August? No, I don't. I think I think with, with between between ghost attacks and and all that stuff, I think I think who we the stopped heck? counting time when people started being mad at <laughs> that time being counted. That's right. Maybe we should kick it back on. I I I for one vote for who the hell let it be August. Who the H H word F word let it be August. Um, the old H or F Because now now we're doing things. People like things and stuff, and we're we're delivering it, baby. People are fans of things and stuff indeed, Justin. Thank you very much for that. Especially yeah, doing man. things. Doing like, it, like, like, it's not like they just love that things exist. It's like they like them being done. Being done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then, and then not doing things. Oh, oh. oh. Sometimes it's the worst. So, no, sometimes the it's worst. good. I'd say, what? I'd say nay to that. Mm. Mm. Nay, nay is for horses, not <laughs> people. <laughs> That's right. I just had that little panic as I sat down here and I looked. I'm like, did I mute myself while I used the restroom? No. Uh, oh, yeah, you well, thought it might have gotten a little. You were good. We did not. A little foley work. A little bubbly. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was proud of that stream. Just saying. You know. <laughs> the healthy stream. It was, it was a live, live stream. stream. We're doing right now, guys. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See? That's right. <laughs> like the quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I feel like we're all in the zone. All right. <laughs> I think okay. we're all here. <laughs> all right. Ooh, I gotta I gotta click a few more buttons. One last second. Uh, hello, everybody. Don't forget, you can use the exclamation mark s, the bang s command in the chat, to suggest an episode title for the episode we will be recording uh, here in just like uh, ten seconds. Whoa. No. Whoa. It could be memorialized forever. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I just gotta okay. show you. I hmm. accidentally today uh, is the a... birthday of MTV forty years ago. Uh, hold on, Andrew. <laughs> I think you interrupted Andrew. I was about to say something with uh, a total non sequitur. <laughs> I, I, I did because no, right. uh, Twitter. Go ahead. Andrew. Sorry. Oh, I I made a gif to make some dumb joke, and then I I tried to drag it. I forgot you drag it, and you can drag a gif into Chrome and view it. And I actually dragged it into Safari. And I didn't realize that's how you change your background image in Safari. So oh, now every time really? I open up Safari, <laughs> I want to change it, but I'm like, I just need to punish myself for no, what I did. That's so. great. That's uh, that's that's the reason my background is uh, <clears throat> whatever that Doki Doki sad game is. Uh, Doki uh, Doki Literature Club. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, that's a it's a daily reminder that I should it. I should really make an account just for Josie. <laughs> <laughs> all righty i've got my stuff going i think we're ready to go you ready everybody ready all right andrew i'm i'll count you in here start weird things in three two hello and welcome to the weird things podcast i'm andrew mean joined by justin robert young hello mr brian brushwood no hoy sir and Bryce Castillo. Thank you. For inviting me, inviting me, inviting me back onto the show. Y'all ready to Bryce? So we had a we had a lot of drama in space last week. Go on. I don't know if you followed this. So good news is Russia sent up a new module for the space station. Oh, um, I only barely heard about this. Well, it was, uh, listen, Russian hardware is like amazing and it's been working for over half of a century and it's incredible. But, uh, first problem was, is they sent this, they sent the, the, the module up and they weren't sure if it was going to be able to make the right via NACA. They weren't sure if it was going to make the right orbit because there was some problem with like, there was like a bladder system for like the, like there wasn't, enough, there was too much pressure on a thruster. And so they weren't sure if this thing was going to be able to raise its orbit high enough to get to the ISS. So that was the first bit of drama with the NACA was like, this thing may not make orbit and it may have to be, you know, come back, which would be bad for everybody because this yeah. is a, you know, important part of the ISS uh you know they're replacing another module and this is sort of critical so that was the first big oh it's gonna happen well finally they're able to solve the problem 
And the Naka was able to get up to the ISS, was about to go do the docking. They're worried at the last moment that it wasn't about to do like a docking lock, and they're about to take over because they're afraid. Finally, it took over and the docking system worked and it mated with the, the space station, which was fine. Uh, and and, and I, then, be I, I believe we have some archival footage of uh, the spokesperson for uh, Russian rockets, <clears throat> Sergei Rushy, Rush, Rush, Russian. Uh, uh, can I uh, can I get to the lead before he comments? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I I, I thought we would take steps <laughs> up to there, but, but 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 go ahead. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I just want to get to the the scary part. Or did you? Uh, oh no, 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 no. I I I I I think we have yet to get to the scary part. But at this point, already. Uh, Sergey, <laughs> not everything has gone great up to this point. Uh, would you like to comment on the fact that it, your rocket barely made it to orbit, and 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 you weren't sure if you were able to make it to docking procedures? Uh, things uh, are are going uh, as the Americans say. Uh Sight? <laughs> sight? Uh, sight? Yeah. Sight? You know, sight. So, wait, do you mean psych? No, no. You mean sight? Like, like it's a. Uh, oh, it's all right. Sight. 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 Okay, okay. Thank you, Sergey. But, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, more uh, coming in uh, uh, each moment. Okay, okay. okay. Th th thank you, Sergey. Sorry. Uh, uh, back to you, Andrew, uh, 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 on the story of, of this vessel. So, uh, it goes and uh, finally it docks. We're like, yay, it's docked. Problem solved. Yeah, that's good. Then one of the effing thrusters starts to go off. <laughs> and it starts to spin attached? the ISS. Yes, yes. And the official, like, oh, it's a, it's a little bit, everything's fine. Nobody's in danger. I have, I'm going to send, I'm going to send Bryce here. The, they went and recreated to see what was going on. Um, <laughs> And basically, a thruster started firing, and so the other thrusters on the ISS started firing to counteract that, and they tried to basically solve this problem where all of a sudden, you know, they have these other thruster systems that go off. So I just sent Bryce. By, a, by, by the way, Bryce, when you're sending, while, while you're sending that over, don't panic VU in the chat says easy as cake, which I, I, uh, please fingers crossed. I hope you're making a reference to the movie 2010, uh, uh, which is amazing <laughs> where it's like easy as cake is like, no pie, pie, easy as pie. Oh, uh, uh, so, uh, 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 okay, so, so uh, this yeah, thing, you know, docks you know gotta... this is, uh, not problem with strong Russian rocket, uh, <laughs> strong, strong module get to, uh, I, I says, this and, <laughs> and, uh, uh yes, okay. you know, that very weak me, yeah, I says other countries together, yeah, <laughs> yeah. strong Russian rocket, too strong for, for small Puny ISS station. It spins as much as it need to spin. What's his problem? Uh, well, uh, uh, much like the. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, All right. never mind. Uh, so minute twenty. An old Russian proverb: "This spin you right round, baby, you right round." <laughs> like a record, I sent, baby. I sent right Bryce round. a video. Yeah, that's right, right there. This oh. is Scott Manley. He did a reconstruction. They looked at the telemetry data to see what's going on. So he made, recreated it in Blender, and we're about to see what happened once the thing was docked. And uh, so you're, everything's normal. We're cruising on it. The, the space station has to travel backwards for the docking. You're docking. We're floating in our space station. Everything's super chill and cool, right? Super chill and cool. I mean, it's very yeah. cold in space. Uh, Russian space dude, congratulations. Great. We were worried there. We, we thought there would be a problem, and uh, I'm glad everything's fine now. Um, uh, oh! Wait, wait, sorry, what's what's happening now? <laughs> oh my god. See the thing on the screen? Good lord. Oh my god. So that, that thing was... is just holy crap. That was over a span of an hour, but that was uh It's like a lathe. It's, it's spinning around. It's not supposed to do that. Is that... NASA's uh, like everything's so... fine. Nobody was in danger. Everything's fine. I mean, uh, uh you're welcome for the artificial gravity that you experienced. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh just uh, one of the many bonuses of working with uh uh, uh Space Russia. Sergey, uh yes. do you do you want to explain what happened? Well, you know, as as you see on the uh, uh, recreation on YouTube, mm. you know they have uh, 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 
spin to make sure that everybody is prepared. Uh, Russian module, very prepared. Uh, the rest, uh, not so much. So get better next time. Good job, team. <laughs> okay. So, so you're saying the purpose of the spin was to prepare everybody. Uh, you know, in, in Russia, you have to have a um, surprise <laughs> to, to get prepared. Life yes. is not... Uh, you have to have a surprise to be prepared Brian. for the uh, next surprise. Yes, you need to have, you need to have a little spook. In Russia, small children in bed. Bah! Jump up, scare! You, know, no, you have to have, you have to have, because if, if otherwise, soft baby men, you know, on watching anime and t- commenting on TikTok. So, 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 you're saying you did a favor to everybody in the international this is space? This regular Russian thing. This is not different than any other. You, know, you are at work. Somebody has cake for birthday. Bah! They throw cake in the air. You get yes. fired okay. because if you do I'm not get cake, this is how they. This is how they trained Yuri Gagarin, I'm pretty sure. That's this is how did. we do, yeah. Why do they fire you if you drop a birthday cake? Because if you do that, then who else have cake? <laughs> you just... you need to keep study with cake. Just clean it up. Ah! Oh, oh, my cake. cake, damn it. Get out. You okay, go. go. You live forever. <laughs> this, this cake breaks chairs. Uh. <laughs> oh. Anyway, see you later, me, the <laughs> Russian spokesman. So is the ISS doing good? I'm, I'm so glad it pushed through that I'm, bit. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'll see you later. Just like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, has anything like this ever happened, Andrew? <laughs> Uh, outside of a Michael Bay movie, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, like I believe, I believe that was literally part of the plot of Armageddon. Is well, that they went yeah, up to yes. mirror and they spun it <laughs> sideways, and somehow gravity happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I love that movie. That was one of my favorite scenes too. Well, so, so just... where where does this like? And 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 uh, pardon me for for being kind of elementary on this, but. Uh, we had China launch a rocket and they didn't know if it was going to like where, where the remains of it were going to fall into uh, uh, the atmosphere. Russia launches a module and it flips the ISS because the booster doesn't work. Uh, obviously, we talk a lot about space travel from American companies and NASA here on this podcast. But is there a real gulf that we're kind of seeing in, in terms of... of a where where NASA is, where the benefit of our private space and rocket uh, 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 companies are compared to Russia and China, which have been, uh, uh, you know, pioneers and and titans in their own right when it comes to space exploration. Uh, but before Andrew responds, because I think both of us hold him up as uh, yeah. the mm-hmm. the goldest standard yeah. of of knowing more than us. Um, my guess would be that um, in any situation where you have very few data points it's easy to pick what looks like a trend of, of one being the good space agency and one being the bad one or whatever. Uh, 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 so, so I guess, I guess to elaborate on Justin's questions, Andrew, in, in the opinion of, of, of us, by which I mean you, uh, uh, do, do you think that this is an artifact of there not just being very many launches or, or is America number one? (laughs) Like basically. Um, I mean, the, the the Russian history. I mean, China's new at this, and most of the China stuff is based on like Russian stuff. So Russia's got a great history of this. And like I said at the beginning, it's like they've got hardware that's fifty years old that works wonderfully well, is extremely well tested, and their engineers and scientists are you know the best in the world. They're just rank among our best resources. It comes you know China's new, so China you know China finally had their successful Mars lander, the first the second yeah. nation to ever put a working probe on Mars, which kudos to them for being able to do that. Uh China's built a couple space stations. They're built on like 40 year old Russian designs though, which is crazy when you look at like you see this thing that was originally designed to be a missile system that's now a Chinese space station or is it? Uh Russia resources they they just the money they don't have the same amount of money to work with to do this stuff they don't have you know the ability to basically do the same thing that we do they're they're very underfunded it's still a state space agency and even with our system of contractors and things like that is you know often you know one of the criticisms we have of our big space companies prior to spacex is like they don't take enough risks 
Yeah. Well, it should you take risks when people aren't involved? That's the goal. Yeah. But I would say that I think it comes down to one, the system, two, the money. Systems, if somebody makes a bad decision, you're stuck with it. They made a lot of really good decisions early on that still benefit them, but later on, yeah, know, and, 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 and you know, uh, somebody here in the chat was like, "Cue the 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 supercut of all these SpaceX rockets blowing up uh, on on the launch pad." Yes, a few key points to that. Number one, they were on the launch pad, and many of them right. were in you know their their test facility in in Boca Chica. That's where you want rockets exploding. Number two, that's a a a fringe element of a government run space program. Like, like that is, that is a, a private thing that is happening on the periphery of it. Uh, uh, and so I, I, I do think it's fascinating to kind of see where space, you know, a government run space travel is going to be over the next, you know, 20, 30 years as, uh, you know, China is certainly, uh, making strides and, and maybe it is Russia just, you know, at least in in the current situation that they're in right now, that they don't they don't quite have the fuel to sort of compete metaphorically. And it is worth noting that in the early days of any journey to space, um, I don't want to say uh, like like everybody deserves a free pass or whatever, but but it it is unsurprising to have problems happen. Yeah. Whereas like Russia has always had one thing really going for it, which is uh, the stability of their their program and and the reliability and the track record and and as we've talked about, friend of the show Richard Garriott said that you know uh, in his heart of hearts he was happy that he went up in a Soyuz rocket and not in a, uh, a space shuttle because the space shuttle had a one in a hundred chance of blowing up, uh, whereas the Soyuz rocket had a, a very 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 good track record. So it, so it puts me in the weird psychological position of questioning whether or not I should be more upset or less upset that something quirky like this would happen. Like, yeah. like on the one hand, uh, on the one hand, uh, Russia truly does because they rely on, on tried and true methods, uh, has a very, very good track record, but also that makes me want to be more upset that they would have such an egregious mistake, uh, you know, like rocket just turning on randomly. Well, as I said before, like if it's, if it was stuff that was developed during the Cold War, it seems to be pretty solid and dependable. It seems to be some of the newer stuff and the new designs. And my 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 very very uh, unexpertise opinion. There are people who have just followed this more who have probably a better opinion and can describe it. That that's my assessment. Is it looks like the stuff that came out of the Cold War they developed over years. Those engines, whatever, which had you know, only had like two accidents compared to the number of launches they've done. Um, it's the new stuff and again it's the underfunding it's the thing that like they're trying to make do with what they can and i think that's sort of the problem it's like their their engineers and their research their scientists are they're amazing i mean they help yeah. pioneer you know the us and the russians were the pioneers of the space age and what even in the cold war what they're able to do with a lot of limited resources was incredible you know so yeah. uh i i think that the problem is like if you get a chance, you know, the, the uh, Ashley Vance biography on Musk is good and Eric Berger's book Lift Off is good because you get in the Ashley Vance, I think they get a little bit more into the whole story when R Elon went to Russia to try to buy a missile to be able to launch his little greenhouse to Mars. And the players involved in Russian space, the, the, the corruption, the shadiness, all of this. Uh, you know, rocket engines that we've been using for American launches, like I think it was the R-25s or whatever, these were found in a warehouse. That no, They just opened up some Soviet-era warehouse and found all these rocket engines that were just wow. sitting there. Wow. And that's the official story. You wanted the unofficial stories. Who put them there? Who made, you know, like how? what what was going on? And so yeah. I'm amazed they're able to get anything done, to be honest with you. Hmm. Yeah. So. Well, uh, I'm amazed that people keep contributing to this podcast, uh, not because it's not worthwhile, but because uh, I am very dumb. Uh, so please head on over to patreon.com slash weird things and uh, continue to give us money. Every single cent that happens I'm sorry, uh, Justin, blows me uh, out of the water. Uh, uh, right now, we're getting a live minded. phone call right now from Sergey from Russia uh, who wanted to chime in on 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 people contributing to our Patreon. Uh, in the... Um, uh, 
American system, they have uh, no arts uh, funding. Uh, pathetic. And uh, uh, you have uh, proletariat feed other proletariat in uh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash weird things keep uh, Sergey as, as character and as human <laughs> alive. Uh, uh, continuing to deliver uh, Russian state uh, space news and uh, comedic notes and uh, uh, go there now <laughs> patreon.com slash weird things uh, uh, dollar uh, or or more uh, uh, I mean, maybe many rubles you are really uh, peeling it off you're a big shot uh, <laughs> good job for you uh, patreon.com slash weird things so uh, we had some comments about uh, indirectly about Jeff Bezos's rocket <laughs> and yeah it's shape right well i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna throw this out there i'm gonna be controversial okay um it'll be like ah this guy spent a lot of money to go in space and stuff and all that and like and he got me a billboard so everybody shut up <laughs> um <laughs> let's let's, let's but, also but, point but, out but, that but, andrew's but, andrew's book had a Times square billboard uh, uh a, a couple weeks ago can, uh, uh, can we can we take just just a short 90 second sojourn and just talk about our complicated feelings about all of this because it's like we're happy there's a space race we at various times are cheering for different people and at various times we talk about who's winning and who's losing in our opinions or whatever but also like ultimately we just love that a lot of people are going to space oh uh, yeah. yeah and i i i'm gonna i'm gonna defend the whole the blue origin thing like this because they're like ah oh, this billion like any one of you and i mean anybody listening we gave you a billion dollars tell me you're not gonna go out and do some stupid crazy stuff yeah, yeah. i mean you know who who among us? Oh no! If I had this, I would do what? Well, Charities has done all that. Environmental, he's done all that stuff. Guy wants to go to space. Yeah, let him go to space. Let him do this. Uh, hey, I mean, <laughs> we what? You want him to stop at keeping the expanse alive? <laughs> like, yeah. no, let's actually go to space. Yeah. Um, he brought like you know this woman. She's the oldest woman person to ever go into space. Now made that possible for her. And she could. I feel like she could beat all of us in arm wrestling too. Yeah, no, she is she is uh, uh, sturdy. Uh, I, I will say, and all and all the, the the stuff that I saw. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I I guess certainly people who who have a larger worldview, you know, who who are are looking at this as a, a reflection of of you know a, an economic system. If it is if it is a a a, a a shameful moment for capitalism. I guess you can read into that whatever you want, but uh, ultimately, is it? I, I if if that's what you want to do. I mean, I'm saying yeah. like if you want to take if you want to take these uh, uh, these pieces of data and and tell the story you want to tell, then 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 you can do that. Nobody can stop you. It's your own brain. But like uh, the uh, the long meta view of history, I think points to people doing scientifically uh, uh, fascinating and groundbreaking things and, and rewards them. Like we, we are always going to be biased toward the doers and Jeff Bezos uh, uh, putting his own life on the line and his brother and the oldest woman who is going to go to space. Because, Wally Funk. Uh, and his, and his money. And his money. Yeah. Like, like, like to, to do that, I think is something that will be looked at and, and rewarded. Now, uh, the, the the stuff on top of that of like okay what about what is space tourism and uh you know how does that re reflect in terms of how somebody who's very very rich would spend their money to do it like yeah, i think in general we've probably been cooler on on the concept of space tourism in comparison to something like what uh, a spacex is doing in terms of actually using their rockets for payloads and and stuff like that but uh in addition to it like, I don't know. I think more rockets is cooler. I, I think I think that this this is something that that the more we fill that out, uh, if you care about space and space travel, then it does matter. And let's let's also remember that we're, I mean, are are we are we uh are we ten years away from we stopped dreaming? Well, when, and, when, and, when 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 was when was we stopped dreaming? Because oh, <laughs> I wanna I wanna know like like who, within, who, within who was it that said that? 
I can't remember. Uh, but uh, uh, if, if we were, you know, if we're less than 10 years away from we stopped dreaming, now we're at stop dreaming Please so stop ostentatiously. Dreaming. Right. So, so, so they're, they're sort I believe of, that was 2012. 2012. Oh, my God. We're coming up on the 10-year anniversary if, if we, we stop dreaming. dreaming. Oh, my understanding. Oh, that'll be a tasty day on Twitter. Um, there are sort of two tracks. Um, functionally, what we just saw uh, Blue Origin accomplish was the type of thing that was front page headlines and a national celebration a scant 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I cannot distinguish between the two. Um, however, comedically, uh, I am so sorry. I am somebody who uses Amazon. I love the convenience of it. I think that as far as uh, distribution and uh, 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 as an entrepreneur and all these things, there's all these things to love about it. However, you could not comedically lay out a grander buffet than, and now that money gets launched into space. Now, ultimately, I do understand this is his money to spend however he wants. And yes, following in the footsteps 50 years later of John Glenn is a worthy way to spend uh, 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 your money. And I'd Alan rather Shepherd. you do that. Uh, oh, yeah, Alan, Alan Shepard. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Glenn orbited. Ooh, sorry. What a faux pas. Uh, <laughs> Tony cares. <laughs> I'm like, I even say it because it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, I'll just say it to annoy him. Uh, no, Alan but, 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 but you, you get what I'm saying. Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin. You, you get. Uh, it's actually, uh, 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 wait, what was the dog's name? Uh, uh, Leica. Yeah, Leica. Leica, Leica yeah. They just uh, left actually, that dog a Nazi up there. Nazi B2 rocket. A Nazi B2. Nazis did it. Yeah. Nazis did it. <laughs> but, but, but you see what I'm saying, where it's like, it's so peculiar that it's functionally indistinguishable from what is generally regarded as one of the greatest achievements of the 20th century. And yet, um, uh, you know, everybody wants to tell somebody else how to spend their money or whatever. And also I'm conflicted because it's, it's a very easy, cheap, funny pop to talk about. Uh, I got all your book money and I'm going to launch it into space. It's, uh, it's too good. I, I, I do think that I, it should be said for, for the record that, uh, it is a very online thing to criticize Jeff Bezos and Amazon and to cast a very negative light on Jeff Bezos and Amazon. You can believe it if you want, but if you look at the polling, Amazon is not only one of the most revered and posit people think more positively about it company-wise, but in terms of institutions, up to and including like the U.S. military and stuff like that, Amazon is looked at incredibly favorably it's like in like the top two or three revered institutions in america uh now part of that is probably because it revealed itself to be an indispensable you know like uh, a a part of people living through the pandemic right uh but amazon is is uh, a, a very much revered and jeff bezos is the most visible uh, visible person uh there oh, also it makes it even more funny that we're all to some degree by virtue of right now live streaming on Twitch being paid, I mean, you know, there's some amount of 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 ultimate punching up that we all get to do. Oh, oh let me it's, also it's let me so also hard let, let, to, let me yeah. also declare that my house was bought with Amazon stock. So uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. there's there is also there is also that. Let me also just just uh, reveal myself to be a total Amazon shell. Right. By the way, Amazon has a fine selection of books and other materials you may like. And so. <laughs> I, I mean, again, uh, I, I think that's why we're all tempted to make make jokes, right? Is is because uh, uh, because he's literally all of our bosses. <laughs> like all of us get paid. Well, well what's he gonna do? No, yeah, what's he gonna do? Fight me! I can call him. I can call him. Come on, fight me! Come on, fight me. Don't, Jeff Bezos! Don't, come on! Don't shut up! He doesn't mean it. He yeah. doesn't Let's go! Mean it. I'll take your bald ass any day. Let's go! <laughs> no, he's kidding. He's kidding. It's a beautiful head. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, fun fact, uh, so the first man-made object in space, as we pointed out, was a V2 rocket. Okay. Um, it was MW18014, which... Was that, was that a Werner von Braun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would have been one of his. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's like, that's the thing that, the one thing we don't talk about was, uh, you know the Nazis in space <laughs> and the fact that they were first uh, and then early space hardware was all built off of V2 rockets. Like our first actual ones were. 
just we took V2s and redid it. And it's in it go, well, the Nazis are horrible. Like, yes, so was the Soviet Empire. Well, and and, and also, I don't know, maybe uh, um not not to get too deep into the weeds, but it's like, okay, yeah, they uh, uh, uh after World War II, America collected like Pokemon, all of the Nazis, and put them to work to create our space program. Um and and Yes, there are a million legitimate reasons to feel very gross about that or whatever. But the counterfactual I, I, I want to contemplate for just, just a few seconds is, uh, what was the better alternative? Uh, that, 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 that we send them somewhere else or say... Oh, that you... the Soviet Union get all of them? Yeah, right? Or, yeah, or, or yeah. that it's like, you stop using your powers for good... <laughs> you know, or 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 whatever. You know, I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's, it. I I think anybody who who wants to seriously go back and relitigate that element of history is is kind of kind of being a silly goose. Yeah, but also, but also, there's some number Welcome of people, and 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 I I yeah. I, th I think it's I think it's important for us to remember that some number of our audience is hearing this fact for the very first time. Oh, sure. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And oh, in absolutely. that regard, yeah. it's like, uh, like, like, think about it. Like, well, what else would you like to have had happen with, yeah. with these and, minds? And those of you that want context, the, the problem was, is it <laughs> one, the Nazis, uh, two, their V2 rocket program towards the end of it, they were using slave labor. Like they built, they, when we kept bombing their rocket, you know, co you know, construction sites, they eventually moved construction into a mountain and they found nearby that there was a slave camp that was being used. Those people were being used. Many people, thousands, more people died building those rockets than they ever actually killed when they dropped down on England, which is one of the just great tragedies. Werner von Braun, who had been in charge of the program, you know, it's a complicated story. His legacy there, certainly there's asterisks there, but what he was able to bring to the United States space program was phenomenal. You know, there's the Disney program, Man in Space, I think is the first one, which is now available on Disney+. Plus. You get a listen to him talk about this. And in his point of view, as he says, he didn't understand. There really, he didn't have a choice. You know, it was either cooperate or be arrested and watch his family be put, t taken away. And the veracity of that, I don't know, but I wouldn't put anything past the Germans and stuff. And later on, he was a very, very dedicated, very loyal American and did a lot to advance our space program. Yeah, that's one of those things where real quick I realize, uh, like, uh, the phrase that keeps rattling around in my brain is, above my pay grade, above my pay grade, above my pay grade. But but I, I know this much, it's like all things being equal, I'm thankful for the expertise that uh, that led to, you know, GPS systems and, and, and where we yeah. are today with satellites. Yeah, and I, I have people who are bothered, upset. I, I can't argue and say, no, you know, you're you're wrong to be angered by the yeah. fact that people who are part of the worst, one of the worst war machines ever on our planet, you know, went on to, you know, do other stuff. Like, I, it's a, it's complicated. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so. uh, uh, Wolf Glenn 99 in the chat says it sounds like Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, it is. That because is, that it was is literally, literally based what Dr. On. Strangelove is, yeah. is, is parodying. Yeah. Project, project Paperclip. Yeah. This, because there was a rule we weren't allowed to bring in like certain like high ranking people who collaborated with the Nazis in the United States. And then Project Paperclip was we just redacted, said they weren't, they weren't, they weren't, they were. It was just this like, but we, we, the fear was, the legit fear was if we didn't bring them into the United States and we left them in Germany when, and we left them, particularly in East Germany, what would have happened was uh, they probably would have ended up. They would have. Many of them did end up in the Soviet, you know, right. Soviet Union. They they and would end would up as uh, very valuable uh, assets under duress uh, for for a, a dictatorial uh, regime. Yeah. And if the if the Soviets had gotten the ICBMs before, inter, you know, intercontinental you know, ballistic missiles before we did, th we could have been looking at a very different twentieth century. Very very different. Because there was a strategic advantage to the idea of being able to launch from so far away, etc. And so. Uh, and and uh, this this is all uh, as as most of us are olds on on the podcast. Um, uh, for anybody under thirty, uh, like uh, for example, a Cuban Missile Crisis was such a big deal, specifically because, boy, what a what a privileged uh, uh, defensive stance America has enjoyed since its inception, with an ocean on each side and friendly neighbors to the north and south. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, you know, absent the ability to launch a missile that goes into space and lands on the other side of the planet, uh, we really didn't have much to worry about until they started moving missiles, oh, 40 miles off the coast of Florida. 
Yeah. And then then develop of the submarines, you know, the the submarines with nuclear warheads. Right. That, was that, just... that 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 could sit there sneakily, like a, a scant thirty miles from uh, the White House at, an, yeah. at all times. Yeah. 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 And that is it is and it's interesting to think about too is that. Our subs are out there. Their subs are out there. The Chinese subs are, and it's a very common thing. You talk to people in the Navy or the Coast Guard and stuff, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I know. There's right out there. You know, we spotted this there. So there, because they they do regular patrols along our coastlines. We do the same. It's there's the state of how we have the act number of nuclear submarines out there right now, the number of aircraft up there, the constant state of readiness that's pervaded for seventy years is terrifying." And fascinating. It's uh, uh, depending on where you are in in your faith in humanity and your politics. Um, it's it's both terrifying and in a weird way reassuring because it's sort of um, it's one of those things where it's like there are eyes everywhere and it's increasingly hard to be a bad faith actor, uh, uh, both in private business and yeah, because in private business nowadays, um, you know, you, you have reputation scores that follow you. And I'm not even talking about like the Chinese state mandated ones. I'm talking about like your, your, your Yelps or your usernames or how long you've been tweeting or whatever. Um, uh, that also exists with uh, countries reputationally and, I, I find myself, I, I go back and forth between being terrified and being um, comforted by, by the, 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 the persistent Mexican standoff that, uh, uh, are we allowed to say that, by the way? Is that still a thing, Mexican standoff? Everyone's got guns people on putting other? guns at each yeah, other? Yeah, that's still a Mexican standoff, right? It's not I mean, just a regular uh, standoff. I'd, Should I say the word Mexican again? Too? Are we going to take that from them, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair it's enough. a new Mexican it's a, standoff. It's a Texican standoff. It's, it's Albu it's based now. in Albuquerque. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's and it's interesting about cold war hardware is the B-52. If you look at the service history of the B-52, the first flight was 1952, and wow. yet we're still flying them today. Wow. And like ones that were built, like 50, we have 50 year old hardware that we're still using. Like insane. Uh that that's one of those things that I think number one is truly extraordinary, but also sounds more extraordinary until you think about like uh, the shape of a boat that is 2000 years old and still works today. You know, it's, it's like, there are some fundamental truths of, 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 of engineering that persist, you know, like a, a door is even older than that. Um, yeah. uh, not, not to take away from any of that, but, but. No, I mean, if we were, if you were using the same boat, it would be impressive. And we're using the same B 52s. Yeah, correct. 50 years old. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and uh, I, I believe Southwest airlines got started when they started buying like really old 1960s, 737s and then refurbishing and uh, uh, them. Uh, but I, I guess what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, uh, sometimes I have to remind myself that stuff that works tends to keep on working. Uh, and, you know, and that acts that works today can work 50 years from now. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's when you, when you settle on a really good, does the thing it needs to do. I mean, it's just amazing to me because for something that complex, you know, is, you know, and, and we, and you brought this up before, like the Soviet, the Soyuz caps that, I don't think they reuse the capsules, but the design has worked really well. I just, I just sort of like get fascinated when I think about like, man, there are B-52s here that are like 50 years old. Well, and, and, and especially because it's, it's a technology that is, that we still find remarkable to this very day. And to, to know not only is the technology the same technology, but the, the hardware is the same hardware. Uh, it, 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 that, that paradox of being both amazed and also like, uh, as, as I was trying to portray, like stepping back and being all like, well, why wouldn't it work? And we're like, I don't know. Cause it's really old. It feels like it yeah. shouldn't work anymore. Yeah. You know, here's a, here's a fact for you, uh, from the USO stories is the youngest B-52 still in active service are 58 years old. The youngest. Wow. Okay, that's a good uh, uh, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that lands. <laughs> and, uh, sturdy ass planes. Sturdy yeah. ass planes. S A P. Sap. Sap. Yeah. 
Uh, you gentlemen want to do... Uh... Oh, I got one more news for you. Um, yes. How would you like to climb a mountain on a neutron star? Hold on. Uh, okay, number one, I'm assuming that we're not worried about gravity because I'm going to assume the gravity well is pretty deep on a neutron star because it's the last step bit, before, a, before a, a black hole. Um, part of me wants to be amazed that there would be anything physical to step on because when I think of a star, I think of gaseous clouds that are in a constant state of explosions on the inside being spread out with gravity pulling it back in but neutron stars being so dense i suppose it would be more like a gas giant writ large um so i guess yeah i you've already blown my mind with the concept of a mountain on a neutron star um where are you headed with the would i like to climb it well here's the deal so neutron stars are about 10 kilometers across right um Gravity's yeah, about a billion times stronger than Earth. Right. Uh, so just just that consideration there. There was a story. I'll lose weight. I, yeah, there's a story. You know, just just you know, a little cross what you were saying. Cut out the IPAs. Uh, uh, there is a story about life on a neutron star, and and I'm trying to remember what it was called. And it was very fascinating because somebody decided a science you know science writer science fiction writer decided to write, oh, Dragon's Egg. I think I have that. Dragon's Egg by Robert L. Ford um, and uh, was about life on a neutron star and I think humans talking to it, which was interesting because he figured out like how to come up with the idea of like the biology, the chemistry, because you could have neutron chemistry, et cetera. And just, just you know, uh, very, very interesting sort of point of view on stuff. So, so let, um, I, uh... I, I know you've already read it and I'm trying to intuit it as I think about it. And you could tell me uh, if I'm getting warmer or colder, but I would imagine uh, due to the gravity well that we're looking at almost two dimensional cells moving around. Um, and as far as the chemistry of what's possible in a neutron star, uh, I would imagine uh, here, here, here in our solar system, the, the, I don't know, the, there are three or four things that are closest to Earth. Uh, uh, you got Mars that has about the same size, but a but, uh, crappy atmosphere. You got uh, uh, Venus, which is uh, too much greenhouse. Um, you've got Europa, where we're hopeful that uh, the beneath the frozen ice in the waters uh, with thermal vents, maybe there's some uh, uh, chemosynthetic uh, life. Uh, but, uh, but then you also have Titan, which is the only other uh, planet that we know of um, with, with weather that resembles... Moon, moon, moon. Uh, oh, 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 wait, the moon has weather? No, no, no Titan's a moon. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. Not said, Thanos is Titan. Yeah, correct, no, correct. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, moon, of, moon of Jupiter. Uh, but, 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 but it's roughly Earth-ish shaped, but, but it, it has a methane... Uh, a weather system complete with rainstorms and, and snowfall and rivers and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's uh, because it's all methane. It's a, it's a richer um, uh, basis, but, but there it's not unreasonable to picture, mm. you know, space fish up in there or whatever. It smell like. Um, so, so I, I guess what you're describing to me right now, uh, Andrew feels like, uh, I had to sit with the idea of Titan a bit before I could even really wrap my mind around the conception of what life might look like there. And now I have to take a much bigger leap from there to life on a neutron star. Where, where would the energy come from? Uh, I mean, you'd have, you would have all sorts of radiative energy because of how densely packed. So there's probably tremendous amounts of radiation. Yeah. Yeah, compact, whatever. And so, uh, really, I mean, again, it's a neat book to read because, again, trying to imagine how could you make something happen in that. And uh, by the way, uh, Robert L. Ford's son, Bob Ford, is actually was a writer for He Man and the Masters of the Universe and a lot of cool cartoons. Oh, that's awesome. So, just blood above it. So, there was an article that came in there. So, the disappointing news is I know you're excited for this hiking expedition on a neutron star. Mm hmm. New models of neutron stars show that their tallest mountains may only be fractions of millimeters high. <laughs> I mean, where we thought they might be a couple of millimeters, nope. Uh, where, fractions. Where, where, where are we? Where? 
what's the point of the word mountain? Like, what are we talking about when we say mountain? Like, you know, I mean, so do yeah, I, the highest point. Uh, I, I, hey, don't I make a hey, don't make a molehill out of this mountain. Well, Jeff. yeah, because if if that's the case, then then my 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 teen years will, were were riddled with mountains on my forehead and cheeks. Uh, uh, it seems like that's a little bit of an overstatement. So, so somebody once told me, uh, imagine the most perfectly round uh, ball bearing or sphere or um, marble that you can conceive of. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and imagine all the best efforts to make that happen and have happened. Like, yeah, to be, it's, like, it's perfectly smooth and round. Correct. In all of human history, there is one that had to have been the closest to perfect. Yeah. Europa is smoother and more perfect than that. Uh, uh, Europa, the moon of, of, of Jupiter that, you know, because yeah. it's water and, you know, whatever it's melting. And, yeah. and now keep in mind, Europa has these gigantic, uh, ice shelves and all that stuff it's still more perfectly round than the, the the best manufactured ball bearing so the idea of something massively larger than europa and yet also so smooth <laughs> that that we're talking about less than a millimeter wow. is is their biggest cliff that is that is fairly remarkable andrew uh, if, if i'm reading this correctly from what you've told me I, you know what? I'm going to become a neutron star base jumper. <laughs> <laughs> what did a, you what like that? Did you like that, guys? Devil. I'll All jump right. it. Here we go. Wait, I'm going to practice right now. Here we go. Ready? And. All right, go for it. Did it. Let us know when you're ready to I did go. It. I Let did us... it. Wait, no, wait, what? Ah, I missed it. Hold now, on. Now, Do you have your wing suit on? Brian, some back. of us might say that that looks like a oh, one yeah. quarter of a squat. So, oh, whoa, uh, whoa. He did it again. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm over practicing. Don't sprain yourself. Yeah. But it is, it is a, it, it's one of these things too. It's like science, information that'll never come into use for anybody <laughs> all the time, but still cool. Yes. And you know, what's wild is uh, we, we've been playing a fair bit of VR on the, on this podcast for a while. And uh, uh, I, 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 I forget sometime in the last couple of weeks, I joked that, you know, uh, the holodeck exists and we all have one in the form of the Oculus quest or whatever, but it's like, that's a real thing we could do. We could take, we could take the models that we have of, of like, that's not a fake thing. Well, we get to experience what it's like to jump off a cliff on a neutron star yeah. and get a sense of just how fast you get pulled down and all that stuff. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that sort of is disappointed in me is we're not seeing enough of that stuff because I could see somebody making like a little prince planet in VR and letting you try walking around it, which yeah. would be cool. Like a lot of it is still, you know, still, you know, for FPS stuff, sort of games and stuff. And I think that, and there has been some clever stuff out there, but I'd love to see more stuff playing around with you could you could make you you could in vr you could make it experience what it's like to move around in four dimensions you could do cool stuff you could make a planet really small and walk around i think there's so much opportunity there yeah i think part of it is install base and uh, i think i saw a, a statistic this morning or yesterday that said like uh uh oculus quest is now 33 percent of all vr downloads on on steam which is its own kind of like representative uh of Market of just all uh, uh, video game purchasing, so it's like I, I think the Quest Two, and then whatever comes after the Quest Two is is going to be something that uh, uh, continues to sort of just give the one place where if you want to make the cool thing, that's where you put your money and resources to develop it because it's going to find the biggest audience. I I saw a thread earlier today that that was similar to that that the the Quest uh, sales this is from a, a game developer that Quest sales were like twenty times all pc vr gaming yeah. Yeah. right like yeah. it, it was it was a big thread of a lot of like pc virtual reality is dead long live standalone devices okay. i mean and, and i think that it, as people who have walked down this path uh uh it's obvious why <laughs> you know yeah. it just it, uh, you know self-contained simple and 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 uh, an apple-like aesthetic of like don't attempt to do that which we're not prepared to try well, to do it's like you know for i had my my brother and sister-in-law in town over the week and then yesterday i was you know the my my, my brother-in-law who's a big gamer and D, D guy i was like oh you should try demio and it was like within seconds of of you know his wife coming back so they could watch the kids we were upstairs he had the thing on his head he spent more time figuring out how he could get 
the headset over his glasses than he did going from the boot up to in the game while I was watching him play on my phone and could help guide him. And he was playing with Brian on the, on, 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 on the quest. And so it's like, that's how fast it went from uh, a zero, zero to 60. And it's like, that's, you really can't, uh, uh, you, you, cannot understate how much the the zero to 60 element well, and, and and not only that but i could tell that you were experiencing joy watching him get it whatever yeah. whatever getting it means you know like i experienced the joy of him getting it you know it's like he's like all right well then how do i oh Oh, yeah. You know, it's like it's like and then suddenly it's like it was intuitive. Uh, OK, let's uh, let's let's see how many are in stock at Best Buy. Let's go. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It, it's interesting how. Yeah, I, I think that like I really think like the the quest first and the quest two, they just knocked it out of the park. In it. And people get people nitpick on things. It's, it's a three hundred dollar device. There's yeah. a reason there's not even a $500 competitor. There's I, just, they... I mean, I, I, I had a pretty good financial investment in my uh, 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 Vive and uh, boy was, I have I not touched it since I got a Quest 2. I think I, yeah. I, think I put it, it in a bag like four <laughs> months ago and the bag is still, I see the Quest <laughs> pop up and find new little spots, yep. but the, the Vive is, is not moving. Still in the bag. Still in the bag. And, it, and what makes it part of like, I explained like, if you can't, if somebody can't explain your book or your podcast in a sentence that makes somebody else go, oh, I'll check it out. The cool thing, like the quest reminded me of like that demo was like when I remember when Justin and I had our first iPhones and yeah. we were doing demos at Walmart. And oh, is that an iPhone? Oh, yeah. Let me show you. Da, da, da. And the quest isn't that easy, but it is. If you have friends over, you just bring it to the living room and people try it. And then you hear, oh, I want to get one. Of them. Yeah. Right. You know, where PC based stuff. If it's a console, it's easy. But if it's like, ah, right, here, put this thing on your head, adjust this. Let me plug in the cables. Let me wire up, hook this up. Um, there's something about getting that getting rid of friction just increases, you know, yeah. helps something will spread. But I think it's like it's numbers. Uh, when, when we talk about you know uh, more polished games, when we talk about experimental games, like all of it happens when you know that the people are there, and that's why Steam became so important for for pc gaming because it was like all right here is beyond all the publishers here is a place in which gaming can be purchased like this is now this new uh this this clearinghouse for which it happens and so independent games since right. it was independent friendly it was like cool now indie games this is the one place where you can be like oh i played this cool game where can i get it i don't even have to ask you i'm going to steam right i'll, I'll buy it there uh uh and now and if you fact, have the question, like, be I, that like, for like, VR. I get, I get angry when I have to buy anything, any game that's not on Steam. I'm just like, yeah. uh, yeah, what, what, what do you hate me? Why, why, why did you not put your game when, on Steam? Yeah, when it's like EA or whatever is yeah. trying to like push you to buy from to their Origin store. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, want to do picks? Uh, yeah, I've got a, uh, a sort of middling pick, and, and we'll explore it a little more on Cord Killers later on, but um, uh, I shared with my, you know, my 13 year old is really into like, Hey dad, what is good that, you know, came before me. And, uh, uh, we watched me. Memento <laughs> and I was surprised. Uh, I, I, I've been a big champion of Memento for a very long time. I loved it very, very intensely, but this is the first time I've rewatched Memento and I, and I truly, truly felt like, wow, absent the gimmick, of the out of order storytelling, there's just not a lot there. And, and it, it, it does make sense that as one of the early debuts of Christopher Nolan and stuff, I mean, you know, for what it was at its time, I think it was very, very good storytelling. If you've never seen it, it's definitely worth taking a look at, but, but having seen it, I don't know, 20 so, times so, now. So, so you're saying on, on the rewatch, it, it's like, okay, I get it. But, but like putting together the story, even knowing the conceit, you were like, boring uh y yes like on and, and on his 20th watch he got bored is yeah. how the canonical text will go with so Ryan. there we well, go and we also you probably write a story like that to be a little simpler to be grasped because because you because experience it's so it backwards hard to, to, yeah. exact, exactly exactly because, because e yeah. every 10 minutes or so you need to like relive the entire movie or the entire plot <laughs> so you can see where you're coming so there we from. go right. Tra memento trail rated for 20 viewings yeah, yes exactly <laughs> 
there's on uh, Wikipedia, you can actually see the graph that shows you what the actual sequence is for the story, which is kind of very fascinating because it is uh, shockingly simplistic once you have all the pieces. <laughs> well there. yes but yeah it's but like the story starts in the middle i mean it's just just the fascinating kind of like you know where it actually does start and whatnot and i did not i didn't pick up any of that my first time through you right know, and i just thought it was this sort of uh i i hear i hear what you're saying i have to go back and watch it to see it again and i think nolan and then stuff he's done this brother too jonathan they've done amazing stuff like I rewatched Citizen Kane and I watched some stuff that went around about it at the same time. And it's fascinating because Citizen Kane came out, it got heavily criticized because of the flashbacks. Cause that was kind of a, not a thing that was really done very much. And it was just like, people like, ah, oh, it's this flashback, this narrative structure, like, ah, oh, it's ridiculous. And then it just kind of changed filmmaking for all time. And I think that since Nolan really, Sometimes his use of that sort of structure kind of, I go, eh, but you know, he is, he is, he is amazing at it. And I still, my favorite for rewatchability is the prestige. Yes. In the hundred percent. Cause it's uh, just, uh, uh, yeah. And, and I suppose may, maybe that's the unfair comparison is I had already shared the prestige with the kids and they had, uh, and, and, uh, you know, I now granted I've seen the prestige, I don't know, maybe five or six times compared to the 20 times for memento. So I can't tell how much of it is me, you know, getting bored or whatever. Um, uh, but, but, but I do know that wa rewatching the prestige, de it definitely held up in a way that memento is beginning to not hold up. For me. Mm. Oh, yeah, what do you know? It, the magicians love the prestige. Uh, I, I can't oh. wait until <laughs> All Christopher right. Nolan makes a movie about a blogger turned political commentator. <laughs> what's, yes, that's true. Now, what's cool about it. And, and the thing I tell people like with prestige is that, and, and if you put the effort into prestige, then I think you, you're, you'll appreciate like tenant is that prestige changes three times. Yeah. This first viewing, you watch the character between the two characters. Second viewing, you realize there's another character you had no idea that was in front of you the whole time. Third time, you realize there's a hundred characters. <laughs> there's a person every time you meet them, they're different, yeah. and you don't realize that. And that, that was just, I love that, because I'm like, I enjoyed it. And then I went back, I'm like, oh. And yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. Third time, I'm like, oh. And and, and like, uh, this is usually among magicians put down as a negative mark on the prestige, which is the fact that he just made up the idea of the three acts of a, a, any good magic trick, uh, which was not a thing in the magic world, uh, uh, whatever the intro, the something, the prestige or whatever, or the turn. Uh, but uh, uh, to me, I'm just like, wait, so you developed your own uh, in-world magic system <laughs> about storytelling. Uh, pretty dope, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mostly uh, because it's more I, thought than most magicians have put <laughs> plot and story <laughs> structure. And I, I like Tenant. Like Brian, did you see Tenant yet? No, uh, I think I will though. I uh, the the reaction to, to Tenant was kind of um, there was like a backsplash at the beginning, but but mm -hmm. over the last few months, I've noticed that people have warmed to it generally. So I want to wade into it, not expecting it to be anything other than. The match, you know, uh, the 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 clever artistic trick that I, I that, was that it has I was going. I was colder on it than I thought of. Oh, uh, after after How many? Uh, over time, I only saw it once, so I haven't seen uh, it. That's your mistake. Right. It, that's you. It is you. It this is. Let me show. It didn't. It didn't entice me to watch it more than once. That's fine. Uh, that's yeah. valid. And I, I would say that my thing with Tenet is you watch Tenet, then you watch the F and behind the scenes, then you watch it again because there are there are narratives in there that you don't realize until after you watch it, then you got to go back and go, oh, this is this person's storyline. Yeah. Because things are told backwards. And I would say that, I mean, you're very perceptive of picking stuff up, whatever. I, I, I was just like, I first time through, I had, I had a very cold, like, I don't know how I feel about this. Watched behind scenes, got I, then I'm like, oh, this isn't even blue. Screen. The technical part of it was amazing. But then I went back in the story part of it and I'm like, oh, the Neil character, this is what his journey is. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it wasn't that, for lack of it being a technical marvel, which it clearly is, uh, I think it might be kind of a meta Nolan fatigue in terms of the, the, the grandiosity of the vision getting in the way of me caring about the characters and the storyline and stuff well, like would, that. 
that's why I say on the the second viewing, if that's when if you nail go into a couple of the different character points of view, and I would say I would argue that it's his most human and most personal film. You just have to think of it through in reverse. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, uh, I think that that in and of itself as like it's like it's like okay, like um, um, I don't know, making yeah, uh, it, it 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 felt. It, like it it's was work. a, very, a movie work. you had to come to, and uh, uh, you know Agreed. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll I'll, I'll, I'll pick up I, on it. I don't disagree with anybody who's like I don't like it. It's too much. It's I have to, to have to take that much work to get it. It's not. For, I get that. I I won't go. Oh, you're wrong. You 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 know you mongoloid. No, I I I totally agree that like if it, for me I'm such a Nol- I'm a hyper Nolan fan. I'm yeah. like I try to make Interstellar work. I I like two thirds of it, but the rest of it I don't think the premise stuff. I'm I get eh a lot. I like a lot eh. Tenet was a one like, oh, no, this works. Like, Dunkirk, I enjoy. Tenet, I just yeah. threw the roof for. Well, Dunkirk's a little bit more straight ahead. Uh, the, but I don't like it as much as Tenet. Yeah. The, Sorry. I, 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 it's so bizarre being the one who hasn't seen the movie but has heard it described a lot. Or have you already seen the movie? Maybe you I'm living it. it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> uh, but, but, but it's almost as though... Um, uh, like uh, the Big Lebowski is one of those movies where it gets better once you don't have to try to pay attention to the plot and could just soak in the characters, you know. Uh, and it, or likewise, it almost sounds like um, it's a puzzle box where it's like the puzzle box is more rewarding once you know how to solve it because then you get to appreciate the craft that went into uh, tenant tenant very much to me was 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 a puzzle box and by the time that I got to the end of it I was like all right I know I probably need to unbutton a few more buttons and shake a few more knobs or whatever uh uh but where I think yeah I mean I don't know yeah I think we've already gone over it yeah I I I will offline when we're not it's too spoiler here I'll be happy to tell you like a couple things on the second watch to look at to sort yeah. of, and I don't mean technical I mean like story story wise go. yeah yeah I also this is yeah. irrational I it bothered me that the main character was named protagonist like it it, <laughs> yeah. it just it name him Doug just give me uh, like, I, I was, what, was that I, his name or did he just not have a spoken name he didn't have a name he didn't have a name yes in the in the subtitles they call him they protagonist, call him protagonist. I guess. and uh, there's a but there's a reason when you watch it there's a reason for okay. it's a reason guys yeah. why do you have to ruin everything justin uh uh well and, and by the way uh in uh neil stevenson's breakout book snow crash the hero is literally named he, h-i-r-o hero protagonist yeah. and uh it, like i'm cool. already inoculated cool. against cool. that bug oh. yeah that's cool oh is that is that is that the one that was based on Ready Player One? Oh, all right. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. All right. All right. All right. We're working stiff tonight. All right. Memento. <laughs> Wrapping it up. <laughs> Snow Crash is amazing. There's like you could tell you could tell what epoch somebody's from by like, oh, it's just like the metaverse, or it's just like <laughs> yeah. the oasis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Just because you mentioned Snow Crash and somebody got into a pissy fight about it, I'm going to say Party Down Ooh. is my pick. Apropos of nothing other than I just thought of it. Uh, Party Down. What a a I think at this point kind of forgotten, amazing, amazing comedy. Uh, insane cast. Uh, uh, with a lot of people that have gone on to do just insanely talented stuff. Uh, uh, but. One of the the funniest back and forths is the the nerd character. It's all a bunch of caterers in Los Angeles with a bunch of celebrity cameos. But uh, uh, the the nerd uh, uh, caterer getting into an argument about how he only likes hard sci-fi and and justifying it to people that clearly don't care is is something that is <laughs> I, amazing. My most awkward celebrity encounter was I went into an In and Out Burger and there was the cast sitting there at a table and they looked tired like yeah. they've been on set all day like they're all just oh i'm like oh you guys i love your show it's really good and they're like oh mm. cool thank you I'm like oh it's so great it's really cool just wanted to like cool thank you go the hell away yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like let's we don't want to do i'm like i'm like thinking like not like a lot of people are really shouting up and down about your show right now folks let's be honest okay you know <laughs> like but. yeah doesn't change how tired we are right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, party down. I don't know where it is right now, but I think I'm, it's Hulu. I think it's on Hulu. Is it on Hulu? Hulu uh, well, well, well worth a watch. And it's only two seasons, so go go check that out. It was one of those shows that was like a holding pin for all these actors before they went it to go break out and other stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it was the next show after uh, Veronica Mars for for that showrunner, uh, and and so there's a lot of Veronica Mars uh, alumni that are, are 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 on through it. But yeah, Adam Scott and uh, Lizzie Kaplan are are the kind of two romantic leads, uh, uh, but just insanely funny. And Ken Marino, who is from the state and and immediately somebody that I always I always love, but uh, uh, another great comedic showcase for him. And Martin Starr, of course, yeah. Uh, I've got a pick. Um, uh, I, so I, I, did a, I did a stream over the weekend called The Video Rodeo, where I have people send in videos and rewatch videos. And uh, uh, I found what is, like, the perfect little nature documentary on, on YouTube. It's only, the first part's only six minutes. There are a few different, a few different like, updates and stuff. But um, it's from... This this channel called Hummingbird Spot, and it's about it's about this hummingbird who like uh, 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 laid a couple of eggs and was was uh, you know roosting on them in this nest that that uh, the hummingbird made on these uh, Christmas lights, and uh, just the the storytelling and the the way it's put together is it's really great. You 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 kind of watch the the baby the baby hummingbirds get hatched and. Um, there are a couple of other update videos where there's some conflict about what happens with the baby birds as they grow up, but uh, I was I was taken away at like how like really really cool it was to watch. Uh, so I'll have the link in the show notes. But uh, uh, Hummingbird Spot was a, was a surprise to me to to find just Dude. just good storytelling, even if you've got you know surveillance footage. Uh- I want Werner Herzog narration now. <laughs> you can see. There's like a, somebody did an AI clone of his voice too. <laughs> um, but uh, we can, I mean, we can listen to a little bit. Of it. And, the, and they use they use music and and fo- all this good footage. For is him. it a VO thing? Yeah, there there he is. Um, I, now the wait was on for the next oh wow! Match. It's like like we a like a librarian from my elementary school. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> Little baby. All it's right, just, like right. Uh, we we have a cute limit <laughs> on this. Yeah, show. yeah. Too unless you're about to show snakes or boo. spiders. <laughs> so that's my pick, Andrew. Uh, my pick one is Justin to watch Inception again. Uh, second pick. <laughs> oh, I'll is... watch Inception again because I liked Inception the first time I watched it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's sorry, Tenet. and then go watch Tenet and <laughs> see the kind of tissue between the and two. And once you're fully warmed up, then. <laughs> Just once you give you the easy, the easy thing to watch, then try go to big boy school and watch ten. Yeah, I know. Okay, no, I know. Uh, so, I uh, man, when they announced this thing, I'm like, cool, can't wait for Teacup the movie, um, Jungle Cruise. Okay. Oh, I heard it was good. I, I I also have heard it was good. Well, I hate to tell you this, but you heard right. It's fun. Yeah, it's a fun. It was just. Uh, it's I, don't go expect remember it's called jungle cruise it's based on the ride just expect that i'm 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 expecting a bunch of dad jokes cheesy puns and jumanji backgrounds first five minutes yes first five minutes <laughs> yes he, yes he, i'm gonna spoil for you he is the captain of this and you get the dumb jokes yes! from the jungle cruise <laughs> perfect i'm in you know I, and they I, land like dad jokes <laughs> I think that's just the the strength. Those two leads. I, I almost really wish. Uh, I mean, obviously, among the tragedies of the pandemic, this ranks you know in 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 the bottom thousand. But like, uh, uh, the that this movie was delayed for so long that it was hyped and then and then put on ice and then hyped again and and is in amongst these uh, uh, Disney Plus releases that are like hybrid and stuff like that. We obviously are still in a in a holding pattern when it comes to movies. But like, it it felt like disney had a lot of faith in it uh, uh and and i don't blame them just based on those two leads emily blunt and the rock are like just consistent overachievers like give them good material and they will will elevate it give them above average material they will make it really memorable yeah there's uh you'll hear comparisons made to pirates but i'm like no it's it's kind of the mummy very much to the brother yeah. sister element and all that it's fine it's it's totally fine and and jack whitehall's great he's very not much in the trailer not that isn't in the trailer that much but he's 
he's great. He's really good in it. So you know, it was just a really great cast. Really, it just again, if you want a simple family movie, very crowd pleasing. So yeah, don't don't expect like don't expect big. Oh my god, it was amazing. Just like oh, I just want to have I want to watch a movie based on a theme park ride that's not called Pirates of the Caribbean. That's yeah. literally about a jungle cruise. How Just much lore did they put there. into it? Because that was like a thing where I think uh, the, the, the Pirates franchise wound up ODing on on the the the, the weird lore that they wrote. Like, oh, where how, it's like like uh, well, we have to have a scene where the dog has the keys and they're trying to get the keys. No, from the no, dog, no, 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 not, not not the callbacks, but like the like oh, there's the black pearl and you need to get the mirror oh, into God. the cave because when the cave's in the mirror, then the then the skeletons turn to ice. Also, like, we have a theory uh, about the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of yeah. lore. Ah, uh, but it's it's. But it's, it's fun. It's worthwhile. It's fun. It, yeah, it's it's and also like if you've ever if you have a checklist for everything that's on the ride, if you play Jungle Jungle Cruise Bingo, they get to everything. You you're gonna cover that board. Gotcha. You're gonna right, even, right. even smaller stuff. You're gonna cover it, which is right I think down the fun to the cannibals. It. Yes. Okay. All right. But. Handled in a 20, 20, 19, 20, whenever the other yeah. way. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. 21st Everything. century cannibals. Everything. Got it. Think of, think of, uh, Fine Iron Young Man cannibals. 3. Okay. All right. Got it. Mandarin, okay. Got it. You know, got yeah. it. I see. All right. So, yeah. No, it's, again, it's minor, but you know, yeah. 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 It's been weird. So yeah, how do I want to eat me? So I would eat him first. The weirdest, I'm weirdest impression. That you I was going to. It's entirely accurate. We, it's the best impression I've ever done. It. I just I don't know. Who we got we it. got a little bit of that in that in the episode we watched. Two of you. It's just uh, like weird. I, I have lots of virtual spam. Uh, all right, good show, everybody. <laughs> we'll uh, spam. Uh, we've got. A oh, oh wait, I suddenly realized the scene you're talking about. Yes, <laughs> where, it's where kind he of translates, not as good to me. and it's like he translates the perfectly understandable word. It's very easy to understand. <laughs> he said, "It's like, look, I speak white person <laughs> who has no lips." <laughs> All right, we will do after things in a in a few moments here. Hello, Justin. Hello, Bryce. How's it going, man? What's going on, fam? <laughs> uh, let me put on a little bit of lo-fi chill hop. I've been listening to lo-fi. I, I, oh, I did something weird today. What's that? I, I listened to a podcast today. I have not listened to a podcast in like months. I remember when we first gave you the early cuts of World's Greatest Con and the first <laughs> line in your email was, I don't listen to podcasts. No, it was, I don't listen to historical podcasts. I don't listen to I this podcast, to <laughs> so I understand I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Note one, history, boring. <laughs> yes, yes! Uh, um, but no, I just, I, for, for whatever reason, like, lo-fi lo hip-hop has taken up all of my listening to stuff or yeah, just man. like just music different you're music working things. on stuff yeah uh but well, you know like i'm not uh, i am and it's weird because i'm driving more than you know i probably was you know earlier this year before yeah um so i don't know it's it's weird but uh, uh i got i'm getting i think i'm getting back into it i have a lot i have a lot of a back I'm, I'm not a backlog person all of these episodes i have not listened to they're going to be deleted and through no like, like a river that. Yeah, uh, that that water is past us now. I'm here for the new. Exactly. So um, what do you what did you listen to? Uh, it was a, a a classic. I've been listening to this for a long time now. Uh, the Your Kickstarter Sucks podcast. Oh, nice. Uh, uh jumped back on with that with with that. And uh, but yeah, I just uh, I don't know. I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's strange. Um, because like I usually I don't like have the type of work where I can listen to a podcast while 
I'm like editing or oh, anything. Oh, uh, speaking of podcasts, uh, if anybody is in the Nashville area mm. this Thursday, August 5th at 5 p.m. at Scoreboard Bar and Grill in the Opryland area, myself, Jen Briney from the Congressional Dish Podcast and Andrew Heaton from the Political Orphanage, we'll be there for a meetup. It is outdoors, uh, uh, and uh, I reserve the right to bail after an hour if I'm getting heebie <laughs> heaved out by uh, uh, a possible Delta Super spreader event so mm. show up early and i will hang out with you for an hour <laughs> but uh no in all seriousness it's going to be a really good time if you are uh there for the podcast movement convention it's on the same in the same complex uh which is in the Opryland uh convention center that's cool what is uh uh what what is what is your threshold for when you unsubscribe to a podcast i don't know if i ever unsubscribe from a podcast really i think that i just have i've my 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 menu that i pick from is littered with like daily podcasts that i have not touched in years ah uh, now yeah. i just let him go i just bleep, yeah. go on down that river uh but and I, every so often i will I, I have to be personally offended really like i to, to unsubscribe because mm. I feel like somebody, everybody who would unsubscribe from one of my podcasts is a personal injury to me, and I don't <laughs> want to do that to other people. Mm. So, like, uh, uh, so it's only if if I feel like, all right, you you are like seeing your show show up in my feed would annoy me, and I don't want to give you that power. So, be gone. Mm. I think for me, it's. I think I think. It's it's when I get to the point of accepting that I'm not going to listen to it. Like, yeah. oh, I've I've downloaded these episodes. I'm going to get to them. I'm going to get to them. I'm not going to get to them. Yeah. It's just let's just make it. Uh, when I come back, it, hey, I'll come back and it'll be. But I'm I, I went it, too too many choices. Too many choices is not good. Um, Choice paralysis is a real thing. Yes. Like, and I think that that's that's really one of the biggest uh, the greatest gifts and, and problems with uh, podcasting in general is that like we have built up now through through the the history of the medium an expectation that you are gonna get either mm -hmm. exactly what you want or better than that what you didn't know you wanted and mm -hmm. and uh, uh that will be fulfilled which is not really but also with that being the goal you now have endless space and time right like so <laughs> now you've got to find like a like needle in a haystack and and the, only the finest needle will do or else uh you know it it's it, it's an issue although i don't know i think that's that's where you you tend to get into the the podcasts that are rewarded the most are the ones that are the easiest and friendliest to listen to oh by the way i think i have a i have a i think i have an anecdote for after things that can be a okay. good jumping off point for um i saw a tiktok and it and it it got me to call to action. Really? But it wasn't it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready for me. This is what I always say when I when I did that talk at DragonCon, uh nobody's listening to your podcast and it's and that's the best news you could get today. Um it's like people think they want an audience, but like they you might don't. not. Yeah. They ain't ready for that audience. Yeah. That they, they like like the, the the worst thing that could happen is that a bunch of people show up to your stuff and you're not ready and mm. now all of a sudden everybody knows you as bad. You would rather be bad privately and then and then you know by you the time that your good. stuff is 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 you know you you know your way around, you're not guessing as yeah. much uh which I think would be the kind of way that you know yourself even as we all have our own barometers of when we think we're good or bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think actually that reminds me of a second anecdote on the same topic. So, um, and then I don't, I don't know where Brian is. We'll probably have to keep after things relatively short. Uh, yeah, we're already pushing up against uh four, huh? Uh, I did see him sprint away. No, he's, so he's, uh, cartwheeling and Andrew, you've been watching the Olympics. Uh, when are they going to start? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're going to do the uh, 2020 Olympics sometime in 2023. Wait, oh, do you guys want to see a cute moment? I just saw this this very sweet moment um, at the Olympics uh, pop up on the feeds, and it's very cool and nice. This will be the first Olympics coverage. First Olympics. Uh, here, we here we go. So this is from uh, uh, the official NBC Olympics. Uh, <laughs> 
continue with the jump off. Can but we have two goals? It's possible. It's, it depends if you decide, History, if you both decide on the jump off. So the two of them uh, tied, got the same the same result in the high jump. Wow! And they're both going to get golds. And so instead of instead of them doing another jump off, um, I don't know the other one. Oh, uh, Italy. Yeah. Oh, Look weird. at that. That was sweet. Nice. nice. I think it is weak. I, it is, uh, they should both get uh, no medal. <laughs> this is trick. I got you. <laughs> you want two gold, you get none. No gold medals. Well, only three well, bronze. Well, yeah, remind me, how many medals have the Ru has the Russia has Russia won? Oh, oh. zero. Oh. Wait. Zero. Oh, are they banned? It's the Russian Olympic Committee that's playing, not oh, Russia. Oh, the ROC. Oh. And the ROC is ranked fifth out of out of medal counts, but... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, because they're banned for doping, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who would have seen that coming? What a funny what a funny way to get banned from the Olympics. From I just mean, just flat-out cheating. <laughs> that's very well, funny. Well, it's only as if uh, they've been... Uh, doing this for a very 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 long time <laughs> yeah I, I i i respect the how hard those athletes have worked everything like that i just i think i tuned out of the olympics mm. about eight years ago or so this is definitely a difficult year to follow the olympics they are the the technological rollout from nbc on on serving up olympic coverage is pretty miserable it's no one knows where anything is no one knows what you can watch live tape delayed after the fact highlights live coverage alternate tv channels all this stuff it's a mess it's a mess i just walked into a uh, bryce recreating the end of the hot dog sketch we used to watch porn on our computers now we watch <laughs> it on our phone <laughs> porn up <laughs> Uh, X two. Uh, uh, yeah, right. I, I forget all the. <laughs> I, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. It rattles off to twelve of them. <laughs> uh, okay, we want to do some after. Oh, did uh, did everybody take their break? Everybody good? Yeah. yeah right. Sorry, I I, You're good. You're good. I had to get us paid. Okay. Uh, already. Uh, then Andrew, I'll catch in for after things. How about that? Yes. All right. We'll get started in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, the topic today is I when are you ready to do a thing? Ooh. Oh. Bryce, you mentioned something about clicking through on a TikTok and Yeah. Oh, I saw I saw a TikTok uh, the other day. It was uh from some bank some baker, some local baker in Austin, because it knows where I am and so it knows. And uh, it was like... It also knows that you love baking. And it knows that you love pastries. Well, it knows I do respond well to Austin influencers. I like finding mm -hmm. out about restaurants and stuff. Uh, and so some baker from some local place that was like, uh, y'all better show up to buy my banana. And he's, it's got footage of him making these uh, banana pudding cinnamon rolls or some, some delicious looking confection. Um, and I was like, y'all, no one bought any yesterday, so I'm going to make some more, and y'all better come over today and buy some. And so I was like, you know what? It's in town. I looked the place up. It's ne It was nearby. And I was like, I could go, I could go for a, a, a thing. And I didn't end up going because uh, their website was trash. I, I tried just finding the place was a mess. I had to like go in the comments and he was like, oh yeah, it's called this, but it's not this one. It's the other one. And the website is all about catering. And so I was like, yeah, I, you know what? I I'll, I'm good. I think I'll just have a chewy bar and just get get over the rest of my day. People in the chat are saying uh, that was B. Becky Becky Baker, and what he should have said is that he's over at six thousand six out thirty five between Stasty and Manchek. It's not far off. Um, there's 
but but so it was a case of like and i don't think this person was a, is a baker at this place and makes makes a lot of videos about about baking so you would think like hey go to the website hey here's how you can go here's the menu or here's what we've got today because i know this stuff changes but it was it, it was un, it was unfriendly enough that i was like i'm i'm good actually people don't still and even in 2021 often don't appreciate that the web is about getting rid of friction and yeah. Think about you don't launch. If you launch a product or service online, you have to have a price list now. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago, people were like, we'll, we'll ask, email us for prices because that was that old school, the sales people like, no, I need to know who they are so I can sell them. So don't put the prices online. Have them email me, Freddie, and then I'll tell them the prices and I'll close the sale. Right. And the internet's like, I would go, oh, I need to buy hosting, dot, dot, dot. No pricing, done. No pricing, you're done. No pricing, done. Oh, you have pricing online. Okay, I don't know if you're cheaper than everybody else, but I don't have to go talk to somebody and yeah. go through and try to get sales. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I was in a situation the other day where uh, our friend Darren Kitchen, who has recently moved to town, uh, we were at a bar right across the street from the uh, Alamo Draft House on Lamar, and we got to talking about movie theaters. And I was like, oh, well, you know, they're really leaning heavily into the rent a theater thing. Uh, and, and they actually, because the Alamo Draft House has this great menu of old movies, like you can actually probably find a movie that you would really want to watch. And like we were in a situation where we, I was like, I wonder what it costs. And so we had just in the conversation naturally had found ourselves searching for the price mm -hmm. and found like there was like a food guarantee, but they didn't have the actual price and they didn't have a way that you could book it online to the point where it's like, I feel like in that conversation, if they had had both, even if it was at. 500 right, thousand right. like 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 at this point you had already talked yourself into the possibility of an yeah. impulse buy and and by virtue of not making it possible for you to give them money they lost it well yeah or just to know like oh like because if it was a surprising number if it was like all right it's 700 and that's 300 dollars worth of food guarantee or something like that then it's like okay well now let's start figuring out yeah who, who we have that are friends. Let, and, let, let me start and by saying start yes. Dividing. Let, let me yeah. know I have, uh, uh, I don't know, 80 seats. Uh, yeah. Let me figure out how I can divide 1,000 by 80 or yeah. as close to it as I can get. But and I think, I think I, I, Andrew, you're right. I, I think not only do you need a price list, like you need to have a way to take immediate action to, to give money it, to, the, to, the, to, to solve it. That decision comes from... And my theory is like there's like a theater chain or a company where the person who handled private rentals before was yep. used to a phone call or an email to do this. And they don't understand how the web works or this. And the idea that like, no, people just want to press a button and book it. We don't need a salesperson there. We need a fulfillment person. And that that early days of web, that handicap stuff, handicap growth for a lot of things, you saw one of the big problems too was like advertising online, like Yahoo. If you yep. wanted to buy ads on Yahoo. You had to email them and tell them I wanted to spend $5,000 or more and then a salesperson because they would hire Snapchat did this too. They hired like Condé Nast type, you know, magazine ad salespeople. They didn't build a self-fulfillment network, a thing you click a button and that hurt them. You know, that's why Google took off and Facebook took off yep. because press this button, put in an amount, you have your ad, you're done. And we, we will sell you $5 worth of ads. The, it doesn't SpaceX, matter. SpaceX. Has yeah. a price list. SpaceX has a price list. Yeah. Well, and and so he, here's the message that I take away from this parable um, is, uh, and and it's something that that we've lived through many times with the scam stuff store, um, and it, it 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 took a while to get everybody to believe in it. But it's like step one: accept their money, say yes. Step two: figure out how to do it. If you cannot do it. Step three, worst case scenario, give their money back. Like, uh, like, yeah. like start with yes. Start with what's the thing you want? I want this thing. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I am, as I, of now, provisionally promising you that thing. I, I, I think the idea here is the fear of leaving money on the table, right? The fear of, right. uh, uh, oh, okay, well, for, uh, to Andrew's point with like the, the, the draft house, there used to be somebody who would say, 
Okay, so you would you like to rent the theater? Cool, that's that. Now, we also have catering, and we also, if you want to do it during the day, we have a daycare service, and also we can do cakes if it's a birthday party, and like, like, like that's their worth. That's what they consider to be the upselling and the customization to make this the most magical experience you can. Right. That's what that person defines themselves on, whereas like I was like, all right, if I wanted to rent a theater and watch Pulp Fiction with just Darren tonight... Can I pay you a thousand dollars so we could walk across the street and right. do that in 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 a theater? Like, is that possible? Like, am am I going to be impulsy enough to hit an Apple Pay button and and cartwheel across Lamar? And right. and and Brian, I mean, I th I think you know that ethos that you shared is good, but I, I think even for like this is a bakery. I went I went to their website. They should have a way. Like, this shouldn't even be new. Like, sell it. Like, like. Like I, I, you know, if you're new to this and and you're figuring it out, but that you know, let me buy something online or just let me see what the list of things that you've, you know, if I, I understand maybe bakeries that what they have changes every day. Um, a, a similar a, a parable that I've got is almost the exact same thing. Um, I kept seeing clips for this podcast on TikTok, and they're fun clips. We know it's called Great Night. It's every Tuesday night right here on this very that channel. It's kind of, kind of embarrassing that we actually don't do that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, that, because I would be the person who would do that. So I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, certainly no. not taking oh, it personal. Oh, what are um, you doing, Justin? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so I kept seeing fun clips. It's about it's about relationship advice, and it's a nice it's it's an okay little thing. So I and I see oh it's a podcast and I've found po a podcast before that I really like on TikTok and I download it and I listen to it and I'm like okay so it's got like a five minutes of of introduction. Oh man, our TikTok's doing well. We're gonna spend like ten minutes talking about TikTok. And it's like can you please do the thing that it I came here meet. for because it does like it, it like as a listener I'm not really interested in TikTok I know how I found you and if if I'm an older listener or someone who found it another way I also don't care how other people found it I mean it might it'd be nice for a little thing like hey we're doing well on TikTok that's one thing but five ten minutes about post like that's really not please get to the whole concept of your show and so you know sometimes you just want to you just want to grab people and be like you have to also focus on the product, not just how you sell it. You, right. Like you have to, well, and, and, and if you I'm, can't forget that you have an attractive thing. You need to keep polishing and making better. If, if I'm hearing you correctly, essentially uh, what one takeaway is mm -hmm. remember that the product is a sales pitch to continue to listen to the product. Especially like, if it's a, if it's a free not, product, like yeah, a podcast. Yeah. Right, exactly. Like, don't waste my time. Give me, like, like, uh, and, and we've talked about this. You can actually see on YouTube engagement the mm -hmm. drop-off in the first, like, 20 seconds of how quickly somebody uh, is like, what is this? Uh, this is a waste of my time. I'm out. And then and then uh, down they go. Uh, whereas other stuff, it's like you begin with, you know, uh, if there is an explosion that happens at the end of the episode, there's a reason that it's a trite and and uh, over overdone cliche to get that in the, the very beginning because the YouTube environment, the TikTok environment, any kind of current social media, low stakes thing where it's easy for people to click away, mm -hmm. you better deliver right at the at the beginning. You don't get the expectation that you do with a movie where somebody has already spent $20 and it's not like they're going to get up and leave in the first 20 minutes. You have to deliver right at the very, very beginning. And even at, even for podcasts where, you know, you can be talking about something that's 60, 90 or, or minutes or even longer, you know, it's you still have you still have that in relative terms right you i will give a podcast you know five ten fifteen minutes even and you still have to, i mean you have to hook people eventually right if it's a short video if it's an if it's a song if it's a podcast um and and so i don't know this this is all just to say like you know if, if you're busy focusing on selling your thing make sure that you take a take a moment to like re-examine the thing itself because maybe you're missing something or you haven't there looked was. at it lately a story I probably mentioned on this podcast before, but it's really worth repeating was in the early days of Dropbox, you know, they, they built a really cool technology platform decide, despite what the people on Hacker News said that it was a horrible <laughs> idea. They built a really cool idea, this very easy way to store your files online, our very good technology stack. You know, everything seemed to track it on paper. They looked at this. They just, nobody was using it. Nobody was using it. And they couldn't wrap their heads around that. So finally they went and they took out like an ad, I think it was on Craigslist. And they said, you know, we'll, we'll pay for people to come in here. 
they paid people to come into their office. They sat like eight or nine people around the table and they asked everybody upload a file. Nobody could do it. Nobody could do it. Mm -hmm. And they figured out that it was just what was clear to the people who made it. It was not clear to anybody else. They couldn't perform the most simple thing, which was up. So even if somebody said, I want this product, I got it. They were so confused by it. They had to go watch people struggle and fail, and they paid like 50 bucks per head. It cost them like 500 bucks to get that feedback, and it had been a problem for weeks for them. Yeah, yeah. I have that exact thing with Dropbox. Uh, we deal with video files a lot, and when you open up a link to a video file, uh, the download button, the thing to the primary thing that I do on those pages is it's so weird. It is placed. hidden in like yeah. a triple dot button. It is like the 12th most important option on the entire page. Uh, along that line, I got in trouble because somebody had shared a do uh, Dropbox file uh, folder with me with like old videos. And I'm like, oh, that's great. I want a copy of it. Drag it over. Oh, it's on my desktop now. And then like a year later, this person is just like, yo, WTF, uh, why did you delete the file? I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my God! So it took oh, it because it I cut it. Yeah. Beca wow. Be because yeah. when you when you do what is the most natural thing, which is give me one of those, it doesn't copy it. It, it moves moves it. it. Yeah. Which Boy, is dumb yeah. as hell. I, I think that, I think that's I think it's an ongoing. They they solved that initial problem. They yes. got a huge uptick. But like I get, I had the same thing come up. Like oh down, like this file like. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. And I don't like, I don't use Dropbox as much. I tend to use Google Drive more because it just sort of like. I also don't trust Dropbox to stay around because we've seen so many companies come and go, you know? Well, and just oh, the product, huge. the Dropbox they're, product they're has gone anywhere. Dropbox. Yeah, they're, they're big. They're so much enterprise. They're funding. Yeah. They're huge. They're, sure. They're, Current uh, 2021 Brian understands that. <laughs> Uh, 2016, <laughs> Brian, maybe add some meager. Fair. Yeah. No, totally, yeah. Yeah. totally fair. Totally, totally fair. But I, but I do agree that like there's, I mean, I'm more fearful of Google changing changing the terms of the deal, but uh, but there is, and I'll tell you, let me tell you the secrets about what doing the secret to profitability with these companies is Google does this, Dropbox does this, Apple does it, and I hate it, is the way that storage is tiered, where you can't just buy an extra gigabyte or terabyte. It goes from like one to three, then to 10. Because they know if you have three, you're not going to let it get close to three because you're going to, as soon as it gets close to three, you're going to get paranoid. So then you go to 10, but it'll take you years to get there. So you're paying for all the storage you never use. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the biggest sort of cons with those systems. Is it like, oh, no, you can't pay for how much storage you use. You have to pay for this full amount. And we know 90% of our customers are more are going to use less than half that. Like, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Which yeah. one is this? 50, so this is uh, iCloud uh, in the U.S. 50 gigabytes for a dollar a month, 200 gigabytes for three a month, or two terabytes for 10 a month. Heck of a jump there. But it's a pretty good pricing, though, for the terabyte, yeah, though. If you're doing Google big, Drive big is... Stuff, yeah. yeah. But, but 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 still it's 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 just weird it's 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 mm -hmm. it's it's very strange so but focus don't don't forget to focus on okay on so product. when are you ready i think that to get back to andrew's initial question when mm. when are you uh, uh ready to spread your wings and it feels like what we've come to is you are ready when your work when your desired workflow is competent like so you are ready to spread out to tiktok when you understand for the in the bakery example that all right what's the natural thing that somebody would do if they love you they then go to your website they see where you're at and they understand when your when your hours are uh when it's a podcast it's like okay uh you are ready when you are you believe your product is uh uh tailored for a bunch of new people who have just fallen in love with one clip of your show I would actually push back ever so slightly on that and say that the right time to launch is two weeks before you know you're ready and when you suspect that you can handle it within the next two yeah. weeks. So actually launch, like, and, and this is weird advice, but, but this is me just self-reporting what, what we've done. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a lot of times we, have, we launch products on the store uh, because we don't know how well they're going to do. We don't know whether or not they're, wh which is going to be the most popular color variant or whatever. And the only way to find out is by putting it in front of people. Uh, but we know, and we make sure to frame the messaging correctly to where people know that it's not going to show up tomorrow or yep. whatever. Uh, but, but, but slightly before when you know you're ready for it 
is the time to launch, which is very counterintuitive. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, that's often the advice to give startups is like, don't, if you're waiting for anything perfect, well, perfect, then you, and you would agree with this, is you just have to have a way to improve stuff. It's fine to ship stuff out before it's kind of ready, as long as your plan is to make it better. And yours is. And I think the problem is sometimes people are like, ah, I'm just done with this. I'm going to move on. And they put it out there like, great. Everybody else comes to it. And you see this sometimes people are like, what about this? What? About, oh, no, I don't want to change anything. And it's like, well, this is crap. Yeah. Why'd you put it out there? But if your plan is, now I want feedback. And the reason they tell you to push things out in the startup world is to get that feedback. Because otherwise, you're just going to go nuts internally. Should the logo be this big? Should it be this big? Should we put the login button here? Or should it be here? And there might be some big thing. Like, do you have an FAQ? Why? I don't know how to use it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, uh, I don't know why I'm drawn to the two weeks time window, but that seems to be about as long as I can maintain, uh, you know, white knuckle intensity of excitement to listen to every single thing and make every correction as fast as I can. And then after that, you get tired pretty quick and you decide, okay, we're going to settle and it's going to be this. This is what we can handle. This is how we can distribute it. And that's about all I, I can do. So two weeks before you're ready would yeah, be my advice. I, I think the larger kind of meta point is all especially art and commerce and everything so much of the real painful lesson that you have to learn is where do my efforts meet the audience be it a, a podcast where you're trying to entertain people versus a, a, a business a brick and mortar business or an online business uh, where is the audience you, you always have your guess and then you have your instincts of what you want to do what you want to put out into the world uh, but there's always that middle ground, and and your guess is rarely right. It's kind of a, a on on first blush, like you can sketch out the perfect path and how you're perfectly going to hit, and and you're gonna hit this slipstream in in what is what else is happening, and you're reacting to all these other forces. Uh, man plans, God laughs. Like like you're gonna put it out there, and and the the when you realize that that's where things really kind of begin is once you start to get traction, like, all right, how do we adjust? How do we give people more of what they like, less of what they don't like? Where am I getting in my own way? Where, you know, can I, can I, do I need to dial stuff down a little bit? Like that's, that's, that's the key. Yeah. Ask, you know, figure out that feedback. Also, sometimes you can do one of the things that I did with my books and I knew asking Justin to read a book, an entire book, was sometimes a very big, hey, can you take out five hours from your evening tonight and write, read my thing that I may never do anything with? And that's a big a big ask. But I then realized- Especially considering read, my literacy rate. <laughs> yeah, but like, 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 I'm like, ask people to read the first 10 pages. Just just 10 pages. Like, just, just I, 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 I will definitely vouch for that. As a matter of fact, I actively- um, uh, especially with the launch of World's Greatest Con, yeah. uh, the best thing that we've discovered is is the, the the very small ask of like eleven minutes. That's all I'm asking for. Yeah. Six minutes of episode one, five minutes of episode two. The very first of each. Uh, by that point, you pretty much get everything. Uh, it's either for you or it's not, and that's all it's taken for everybody to jump all the way in. And that, that is, you'll find more people. Like when I go, oh, take this online survey. This survey is only 10 minutes. I'm like, no. What if it was zero it, minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then if it's like, they do, they, or, or they don't tell you and you start clicking through and you see this progress bar go, I'm like, no. And so surveys are skewed towards people with nothing better to do with their times. But like, yeah, figure out like, what's the minimal thing that would give you information and you'll get more of that back. Like, if I need to ask a favor for somebody, like I work with a lot of really smart people, including here and then also with OpenAI, and they're working on really important problems and not necessarily trying to explain something to the chimpanzee here. So I will say, hey, can I just talk to you for 10 minutes? Just I needed you know, 10 minutes to figure out this thing because I got to explain this, whatever. And it's an easier ask because then they go, okay, cool. They're not obligated to talk to me for half an hour or do whatever. And that conversation is super short. There's expectation. We know what this is going to be about, and we're in and we're out. Mm -hmm. uh, one last note on the idea of, uh, in, in, on, on the topic of launching before you're even ready, is that when you launch before you're ready, you now get 
anybody who buys the thing is on the email list for that project. And you get to reach out and say, you know, hello, all of us, team, uh, identity, you know, uh, as a group, tribe, whatever. Uh, uh, here's where we're at. Here's how many we're trying to get ready. Here's what we anticipate, X, Y, and Z. Uh, if anybody, for whatever reason, needs to jump the line, now's a good time to let me know. Otherwise, we're going to assume that you're cool with, you know, it taking a few days to get you your thing. Um, and then, uh, by definition, you always hit a bullseye because you're doing exactly, because you're asking them for the answers as you're taking the test. And then you just make sure you deliver within a time frame that matches the promise that you made at the beginning. One of the, one of the things that was really helpful that I learned was uh, setting up calls with people to get feedback. And this is a thing where uh, I participated on early on was like, hey, like if you have a project, whatever, call 10, you know, set up a meet with 10 people that use our thing and ask them, just talk to them, just spend like, you know, spend 15 minutes talking to them. And it's super, super helpful. And that's the thing I encourage to people is like, and, and the purpose of that is not to seek compliments or people to tell you it's great. It's to get feedback and to find things out. And you sometimes go, oh, I would have spent weeks before I realized this was important, but I had three different people tell me this. And so sometimes it can be ask a small then like one randomly somebody feedback hey can i talk to you for 15 minutes about it because then there's things they're not going to tell you in an email there are things they aren't going to elucidate and then you can say somebody brought this up is this the same thing for you and they go oh yeah i have a problem with this or whatever if it's a website say like hey listen can i get on a video call with you as you go through the website and you can just tell me what works and what doesn't work and then i've done that a lot super helpful there's even um i don't think we've done this but now that i'm thinking about it i think we should do this you can even launch a product that doesn't exist and is not even yet developed as a $0 SKU uh, that basically what they're buying is a, a place in a wait list. I mean, you know, Elon Musk does, does this, right? Uh, and then you can use the data of the most popular color variants. And uh, for example, like um, we're gonna make a t-shirt. Reserve your t-shirt now. It's gonna look awesome. Uh, if you want to have a hand in deciding what the design will be and what the color will be, just check out as if the t-shirt exists and you'll have a place in line for the t-shirt. And what they're really doing is everybody's giving you data and then it's like, okay, well, uh, navy blue is the most popular and the shield design is the most popular and this size is what we need the most of or whatever. It's like, great, I now have demographic data of everybody who's going to buy this. Yeah. And then you go to the people who like the idea of the product so much that even when it did not exist, they went through the checkout process. They now trust you and you're able to say it's out. Who wants it? It's $20, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I, I also think people don't want to do that work. Most it, it, don't I mean, like, like the in the, in that shirt example, I will, I, I, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're not, we're not kind of in specifics, but I, I'd re uh, the things I react to say for buying a shirt, I want to see the shirt. I want to see the design and I want to see, you know, the color that, that the designer or the artists think that it should go with and not, you know, get like, cause sometimes you go to well, Teespring and there's like 80 different color options or a bunch of different variants. And that's, that's, that's too much. And even if it's just a so, but, but, free but, but, data thing, I, I, but, but, but think about it like this, Bryce. So okay. let's say it is for that initial thing. It's like, okay, here's the Teespring uh, uh, thing, except we've cut it down to five colors and we've cut it down to two designs. And then of course you're sizing yourself, right? And you get exactly the shirt that you have customized for yourself. So you get the Navy blue shield design in a, a medium, right? Uh, then, so you get exactly what you, what you wanted. It's not like you're reserving a thing and then eventually it comes out. What Brian now has is the the uh, data of who ordered what in this presale, and now when you do a larger push out, like to to have something permanently on the store, and so now you're not doing on demand, you have to do the big order. You've already got the hard part or the risk taken out of it, because now you're like, cool, all right, I'm ordering uh uh fifty in navy blues uh, uh and and thirty in this many red. XLs, yeah. this many mediums, this many smalls. And, oh yeah, so I, I get that. You're running it there. I, uh, yeah, sure, sure, I get that. I, I just I I I it, it kind of sounded like crowd I, decide what you get and then the no, most I, thing like I but yeah. I, 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 I understand I understand using that as a means to get data. 
Uh, but I would also say, in terms of like when you have the shirt you're selling, you should have. You sell the shirt. Uh, right. You, well, yeah. well in, in, in the shirt example, it would be the kind of thing where it's like, uh, you have a choice. You can either buy the shirt for $30 when it exists or buy it now for $20 before it exists. And everybody self selects with, with, with their, you know, uh, uh, the $10 discount being. I am providing you uh, demographic statistical data of what size and what color and yeah. what design will be most popular. It's they're going to get like a hardcore group of people that are going to want to help you and they're small, but like that's, you know, we've talked about a lot, like, you know, somebody early days, oh, I have a blog. I got 20,000 people, 20,000 people read my blog. No, 20,000 people, 20,000 browsers yes either human or <laughs> whatever through your 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 strip yeah. ball place yeah the number of people that read it lucky if it's in the hundreds but you might have tens of fans there and that's awesome that's yes. awesome because that builds and if you're doing like the t-shirt sort of scenario the idea is that like hey like if the hyper fans give you some signal well that's still good and that's useful yeah so uh we want to do picks yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't know if I have much more new outside of to just double down on our ongoing love affair with, with Demio. Uh, part of this is to shame uh, Andrew into joining us more often because Justin and I uh, <laughs> still haven't slayed the Rat King. Um, uh, and uh, man, Demio is so simple and so fun. And I've so enjoyed, uh, you know, just, just taking a, a short 45 minutes out of the day to play it. It's been great. Rat King's too long, but uh, otherwise, I I, I very much uh, have loved Demio. It is it is so much fun to play. It is, and and ultimately, it's like the reality of the Oculus Quest Two is that the games are good. I like the games. I love the people. I love yeah. the fact that it's become this meeting place for me and Andrew, uh, for both of my Andrews, for, 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 yeah. for, both, for both Maine and Heaton. Even that, a Brian, for yeah. here again. Yeah, I got, I got both. I got, I got uh, two scoops of Andrew and, yeah. and a side of Brian, and and uh, it, it does my soul, uh, it does my soul good. So, it it really is just something remarkable uh, to be able to connect. So, uh, uh, yeah, I I would say my pick is, um, man, I. I I forced my brother and sister-in-law to watch Coffin Flops. Oh no! Uh, oh no! It, it's still so funny. Uh, but but that my my, my Take pick that is Spectrum. Yeah, they told me that at a dinner. Um, the uh, uh, the first episode of the first season of I Think You Should Leave is probably it's perfect wall to wall one of the funniest uh the funniest sketches or funniest sketch shows episodes ever. Uh, a baby of the year is just something that you can write a dissertation on how complex and funny that sketch is uh, uh, in, in, in what they do and, and the, where they elevate the tension and then like elevate a parallel thing. It's just, it's so, so great. So anyway, I think you should leave. Uh, I know people are tired of us talking about it. Uh, eventually they'll come out with a new toast to London and we'll talk about that. <laughs> Uh, I got a little. I've got a little pick. I got a little, little pick. pick. Just a little pick. Just a little, little pick. pick. Little uh, Brett Harley Jarvis of a pick. I have a um, certified chode. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to co-sign that last. <laughs> last but, um, I've been. <laughs> I've I've talked about using the uh, the things app before. The to do list. Yeah, app. yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the things that I like about it is that they have a um, they have a widget on the iPhone that's. The, okay. And you can put those on your home screen. But the thing I forgot about and um, expanded my ability to use that widget is that you can on the I on iOS you can make a stack of oops you can make a stack of of widgets. So uh, the one thing I was like I was like oh well I want to see I have these two lists I want to go back and forth between these two lists. And so I thought well I can put two of them on my screen, but you can just kind of put them on top of each other. Um, and then scroll through them right on your home screen. Uh, so that it, that is is my pick is is uh, iPhone widgets uh, or specifically stacking widgets on the iPhone because uh, they have like the smart stack where they find stuff and they decide what you want. But I didn't realize you could just manually say, okay, I want this and this and this, and let me scroll through them uh, because now 
I, I don't know. I, I I care a lot about home screen efficiency. Yeah. I only want three, maximum three home screens at all. That's it. Full stop. Uh, Cut holy it. cow. Hard. Yeah. Uh, hard. Yeah, that's right. Hard. Cut, Cut it. Hard. <laughs> uh, so uh, there you go. That's that's the widget stack. Widget stacking. Andrew? Bryce, that is um, what? So what's her name? Maria Tendo? Hardcore sort oh, of. Uh, oh. Mary Kondo? Yeah, Mary Kondo. Kondo. Yeah, that's hardcore. I only want three screens. It's, uh, but I use uh, folders a lot. Three I, screens I lot sparks folders. joy. Oh, that's four cheating. screens does not. No, it's not cheating. It's full. It's fine to have a folder for oh, your. Oh no no no! I banish all my apps to the shadow realm. Uh, as do a matter, do as that? matter of fact, uh, I I have the app, uh, the app library. I banish them all to the app library. But do you use the app library when I need to find an app? Eh, see, I don't like it. It's that. either on. I go one home screen, and if it ain't on that home screen. To the app library, so search funny. for it. I, oh, I, I, interesting. I, my my whole take is like my my front page is pretty much things I actually use, but then like there are four other apps I care about, and I keep them buried among the garbage in the back catalog. <laughs> that, I I don't know why. It's it's like I open and I'm like I like uh, there there is page a, the down I, over. Here. I think it might have been Andrew that first told me this, but like the idea that that you could you can understand a man's mind if you look at their desk, and and I feel like. That like the iPhone interface is is also like an, an an understanding. You could really stare deep into somebody's soul if you just look at at, at how they manage and order their uh, their apps. My pick is I use this. It's a little pricey, but I think it's pretty solid. Is ScreenFlow? I have to make for no reason that will not at all be apparent, but I have to make video demos a lot and sometimes mm -hmm. internal and explain stuff. <laughs> and so ScreenFlow is very helpful. Um, if you've ever gone to OpenAI, if you've used some of their, watched some of the videos there that maybe I made, uh, oh. those, you know, might might have been done on ScreenFlow. Um, so it's a thing I use, so. So super easy nice. to record what is going yeah. on on your desktop and then put a, uh, uh stuff on it but put, put voiceover yeah on it. you can record your desktop and your video camera at the same time and then you can drag them into it it all comes into a timeline so you can do timeline editing so it makes it very easy to go in there and add title cards and stuff <laughs> it's a lot of the features you'd find in like a bigger fancier app but it's like i really like you can do your whole desktop you can do just one area of it um they uh you know a very 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 so you know solid that's pretty cool you know i think that there's still there's still a need for kind of uh, focused focused usage apps like that uh, where like, yeah, you could do something like that with like OBS, but this is designed to do this is designed to do screen recording uh, to, to a certain degree, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. yeah. I, I'm a fan. I found it to be very useful. They actually have a library you could buy for like 50 bucks for a year or whatever. There's other assets and stuff you can drag in there. So uh, I use it a lot. It's just, it just become very, cause I know they're like, Oh, I do this. I'm like, just use this. It'll streamline the way you do things, and you'll save back hours and hours of time. Very cool. Uh, screen flow. Cool. Cool. All right. It's been after. Yep. Hey, good show, everybody. Good show. Good, good show. All right. Yeah, show. very viable show. I got your sus, baby. Shot on your spare. All right. Let's launch this, baby. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us for Weird Things. Hey. We'll be back in two Sal. hours for Cord Killers. Um, Go on, Sal. <laughs> we're right. We're Cord Killers. Everybody here on. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a. This is a, somebody it's in the audience. It's not when the series was canceled seven years ago. And one in the audience doesn't have lips, and they, were, they think we're making fun of them. I'm sorry. It's not. Yeah. It's Hannibal. No Hannibal. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, everybody. You're still watching that show? <laughs> We're almost done with it. <laughs> yeah, we haven't eaten him yet. He's trying to eat us. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.